partner of the issuer of our currency and the lender of last resort. After lending more than $2 trillion in loans and getting back collateral that we know little about, is the central bank of these United States in trouble? Is it overextended? Could the Fed actually go broke? John Bussey is the Wall Street Journal Washington Bureau Chief. He joins us from inside the Beltway and Fox Business's anchor Cody Willard is back with us. So, John, first to you, could the Fed go broke? Well, it just needs to keep printing money uh, to pay off what it's acquiring. Uh, so theoretically, it can't. Uh, the bigger issue for the Fed, David, is that if it keeps uh, uh, printing money, if it keeps buying assets, some of the balance sheet of the Fed was somewhere around $900 billion at the uh, beginning of the economic crisis. It's now up over $2 trillion. Uh, dollars. Uh, the, the big question is pumping all this money into the system eventually that's going to create uh, inflation. At least that's the biggest concern out there. Will the Fed be able to unwind some of these activities fast enough to keep inflation from getting out of hand? Well, and Cody, l let's be clear. In past occasions when there's been high inflation due to the Fed printing a lot of money, uh, we didn't have to worry about, worry about these toxic assets. The, que the problem now, not only is it bad enough to create a lot of inflation, but on its books it has all this collateral that is bad debt, or at least questionable debt. We don't know exactly what it is, and we'll talk about how we try, we're trying to find out at Fox Business a little later, but does th that complicates the situation enormously. There's the key word, complicate. I mean, John just mentions a $2 trillion number there. Like you, just, you say, though, we have no idea if $2 trillion is, is realistic. It could right. be $8 trillion worth of stuff that's actually worth $200 million. We have no idea exactly what they're doing with their balance sheet. And, David, I guess that comes back well, to... Well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let me be specific. We know how much they have lent out. We don't know to whom they have loaned, and we don't know what collateral they now have on their portfolio. That collateral on their portfolio could change their overall balance tremendously. Tremendously, and that's what we have no insight into, David. And as you and I have said many times, confidence comes from information. All we are asking for from the Federal Reserve and the federal government is more information. What assets are you putting on your balance sheets and exactly how much right. is going John out John Bussey, is that a reasonable request to get that information? Yeah, it probably is, and I think that um, the complexity of this um, uh, might keep the Fed from being able to be as explicit as it wants to. You know, a lot of these assets um, have depreciated in value, certainly those that the Fed backed from uh, AIG. Uh, there's a couple of billion dollars of write-downs, you know, already on some of the uh, collateral, collateralized debt obligations from uh, from uh, AIG. So, uh, you know, th these are these are you know issues that uh, kind of be going forward for the Fed, and we're probably going to get more complex John because as the as the Fed, you know, continues these programs, it's going to expand them. Uh, it is now looking to buy uh, securitization of uh, car loans, of credit car loans. And student essentially loans. Essentially to pump and money into the loans. system. And student loans, that's right. I mean, and so, John, but I guess that that's what I come back to is the more complex it gets, the more information I want. You're saying the more complex it, get, uh, it gets, the less the Fed is able to give me. What kind of sense does this make? Well, I, you know, uh, uh, you may disagree with kind of the, how the Fed behaves. Uh, I think the bigger issue for the Fed right I'm now simply talking is to, finding, I'm, I'm is just trying to instill some confidence in the marketplace. That's all I'm speaking to. Yeah. I don't care. I, everybody knows I hate how the Fed behaves. <laughs> the well, secret's I think out. That, I think that the Fed's, the Fed's big issue right now is finding the right program that's going to jumpstart the economy. Uh, Bernanke, we have a very good story John Hilsenrath uh, wrote in today's journal that uh, Bernanke's a student of the Depression. He looked at what the FDR did. He also looked at what the Japanese did in the 1990s and concluded that the Japanese simply weren't bold enough. So he is uh, uh, the, the Fed governor uh, and uh, various Fed uh, 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 bank presidents around the country, uh, Geithner included, uh, are trying a number of pretty bold programs. And the, the instinct now is to be aggressive. Uh, and some of that aggressiveness may come back at us with inflation. But much bigger concern to the Fed is that you get an economy in stasis and it just worsens and, and, and uh, chews on itself, basically. Uh, keeps getting worse and worse and worse. But John, need to... the Fed has a lot of assets on the book. We don't know exactly what those assets are. Fannie Mae and Freddie... Uh, had, for example, I think a, a 30 to 1 debt equity ratio, which was just appalling. It never should have had a debt equity that much. Is, is the Fed turning into as irresponsible an institution as they were? 
Well, that's again, you, uh, you know, up to your own opinion, David. Uh, you know, at some point, the Fed's probably. Well, you can't make an opinion a... unless you know what's in it. So, uh, for that reason, we're, yeah, we're pursuing this law, this lawsuit against against the Fed. But again, if in fact the Fed's balance sheets look as bad as as Fannie and Freddie's did, which we thought was a okay institution years ago, uh, are we in trouble? Well, it's hard to look as uh, bad as Fannie and Freddie if you, as the central bank, can print money. Uh, yeah. And that's what the bank is doing. Uh, uh, the bigger issue, again, is uh, not necessarily what's on the books, uh, though that's, that's going to be an issue. Are they going to take big losses on some of the things that they've had to buy, uh, uh, presumably to, uh, to the benefit of the economy? Right. The bigger issue is you get a lot of money into the system uh, very fast, and it pumps up prices. And will you be able to control yeah. that once inflation That's starts. why a lot of people are buying gold right now. Well, Fox Business, as we mentioned, is continuing to push the Treasury and the Fed to deliver the transparency they claim to adhere to. But we have filed a freedom of information request to get details on how much, where, and to whom all those billions are going. We still have received no information. We've been met with a lot of bureaucratic excuses and delays, but no specific information. Attorney Steve Mintz is representing Fox Business. He joins us again with the very latest. So are we suing or not? Well, we're getting much closer. Uh, so far, we've continued to get the runaround, and, well, that's a legal term. That means we're not getting, we're <laughs> not getting what we want. Term. We're in letter writing. We're not getting responses that are sufficient. Um, all of the deadlines have passed. By the time we hit Wednesday, we will have had four deadlines. Four deadlines will have been passed with no excuses, no explanations, no documents, no information. And we're going to have to move forward. Steve, you heard the discussion. You're a lawyer, not an economist. But the same thing is if we don't know what the assets and liabilities of the Fed are. We don't know whether to trust our central bank. And we talk, this whole financial thing is about trust. That's what, that's the heart and core of the problem. If we don't have trust of our central bank, we're in trouble. Well, I think the point is well taken, and I think Cody's point is well taken. What we need to do is we need to get the information. That's what everybody wants. That's what the FOIA process is about. Open government, transparency, make the applications, find out what that information is, and then the public By can the way, both, both Paulson and Bernanke, the head of the Treasury and the Fed, said under oath, Yep. that they would be transparent. Now, is there any legal recourse if they took an oath, swore under oath, that they would have transparency and not deliver? Well, I'll leave that for others to decide whether or not to go after Bernanke for what he said. But can we, use, but can we <laughs> use that in our, in our lawsuit well, somehow? Well, clearly, the whole purpose and policy of the FOIA, of all these rules, is that we're going to have this open and honest, transparent uh, viewership so we know what's going on. And that's not what's happened here. And so that's why we're going to keep pressing forward. We're going to get the information. We're going to get the documents. You know, David, it's very simple. What John keeps talking, kept talking about what the Fed should do to instill, to get something going with this economy. I come back to every time. The Fed just needs to give us information and get out of the way and allow us individuals, we individuals, whatever the proper grammar is there, to just go out and prosper, create value, innovation, do the things we do. We don't need anything First else. Though. The value of the paper in your pocket that has a dollar bill written on it is going to be worth a lot less if John Bussey is right. right. John, thank you yeah, very I think, much. I think. Go ahead, quickly. You know, I think quickly. David, yeah, David, one thing. Um, I made a mistake. It's uh, Bear Stearns, not AIG, the portfolio that uh, right. they've had to revalue down $2 billion. Right. But you, you, you need to find broader programs than just wishing that the consumer buys. No more programs. Yeah. That's what got us in this AIG, mess. AIG, by the way, is being handled and, and bailed out by the Treasury Department, which means you, the taxpayer, right?